Welcome Same. to the Funhouse Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Jacob, and I'm joined by a star-studded cast of characters, including Charlotte Avery. What's up? Ryan Haley. Hey. John Smith. Oh, buddy. Howdy. Everybody else is busy. <laughs> yeah. We're all busy, too. Yeah, but we're yeah. here. And I brought you all together. I, I mentioned Star Studded on purpose because I wanted to talk about space today. What? Oh. Yes. What an introduction. I know. Last you week, love wordplay. I do love wordplay and I love space. Yeah. So it's all perfect <laughs> because like last week, the, that James Webb telescope took a bunch of The telescope? Pictures. The telescope. <laughs> the, yeah. the, the James Webb's like. telescope. James, now, Mr. Webb. I have a question, Jacob. Yes. I heard recently about the, this new telescope that was finally finished being built. They're sending in a space to a certain distance that w was going to trump all previous telescopes and was basically going to let us see like a thousand times more places in space. Yeah, get fucked, Hubble. Is that is that the James? Is that this telescope? That's this one, yeah. Beautiful. That's the very same. Before and, we got into that, I was going to ask how everybody was doing on this this Monday. I'm back here. That's, I'm you're excited. back. You were sick. I was sick, and I'm I'm yeah. back now. Like Violent J. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, I like Violent J. I yeah. think, Violent Jacob. I think Charlotte and Jacob would agree. This is maybe one of the best Mondays we've had. Like, I feel like everyone came in feeling really chipper and bright. We all got a lot of good sleep last night. We all drove. We all drove like, our cars here. We all drove our cars yeah, here. Yeah, I'm so excited to just be present yeah. and also to drive here. What about here. you, Ryan? You having a good Monday? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm having what? a bad Monday. Oh, My car man. was stolen. Oh, oh, thanks no. for reminding me. That sucks. I walked well, outside sucks. to come on this podcast, and I had my arms full of shit. And yeah. I, it was like a cartoon where I'm just looking at a barren street. Yeah. And nothing's there. I'm like... <laughs> I could have sworn. Oh no! Oh, that <laughs> sucks. I could I have sworn it was here. Beside myself. Do you I, always get a spot like in front of your place? Yeah, and for sure. And I remember specifically going out yesterday to get my inhaler for my car, and I couldn't find it. And I remember walking out, and then I realized that I had a deflated balloon, a balloon animal. Okay. In my, uh -huh. And I'm like, oh, that was weird. I didn't mean to take that from my car. Yeah. So, 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 so that's why. That's how I know I have everything there. around it. <laughs> Yeah. It's, an ex it's an extraneous balloon. It's technically yeah. unrelated. Right. You know why you remember that? Well, maybe one of the reasons why you remember that. Why? Finding a weird deflated animal balloon is such a unique memory. Maybe not for you, but it's a mnemonic device. Supposedly, if you want to like, if you're like, oh, I gotta, re I gotta remember to pick up eggs on the way home, you imagine stepping into a shoe crushing a bunch of eggs under your shoe or something like that. Okay. And you'll remember it. I honestly Sorry, still, I interrupted. I, 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 get, I, get, I get what you is. mean, though. Yeah. But, but, because, yeah, I was trying to rack my brain about when I parked my car because there is still part of me that's like, did I park it some... Uh, did I go to McDonald's last night and I yeah. forgot and I yeah. walked home? You know, like, <laughs> did that happen? It's, happens, it's yeah. possible. Yeah, so. it is possible. But it is possible that you would drive to McDonald's <laughs> and then walk home. That is a, yeah. I do yeah. hope you get your car back soon, though, because that sucks. It really sucks. Yeah. It, it was cool, though, to file the police report with the guys there, and then they were like, Grand Theft Auto. Uh, <laughs> like, like the in video the computer. Game. I'm like, oh, You're sweet. Like, I do this every week. Uh, it's like real like, life That's now. what that means. Yeah, GTA IRL. <laughs> there bro. we go. That's yeah. content, baby. Yeah. That's content. Uh, yeah. That's but. why we should have for the next GTA, we do it IRL. We go out in a real car. Steal you for, a new car. <laughs> looking for my car. And if we can't find my car, we steal. Oh, Grand Theft right. Revenge. Yeah. Oh, I like that. All right, cool. Just so you know, Ryan, because I recently had my car stolen too, uh, the cop told me it's like a coin toss whether or not they're going to find it or not. Because I assumed it was like missing There's lots of coins in my car. Like... Sorry. <laughs> no, I think that's about it. <laughs> you know, uh, did you actually have your car stolen? Yeah. That sucks. Stolen from a private parking garage. Wow. That's the craziest like, part. Well, yeah, they have those like signs posted that they're place. like, hey. It's yeah. not on us. Yeah. <laughs> but we both have like the same teen, 20 teen Elantras. Yeah. Yeah. And what the fuck's up with so that? So I think maybe it's a stealable car. And we're calling like, on you, the audience. We are, in, we are uh, not endorsing vigilante justice. Mm -mm. I am, though. I will put a bounty on this person's head. Please come uh, to me. <laughs> am I allowed any, to say that? Am I <laughs> any, return with Ryan's car. Just bring, and, bring any 2012. Hyundai Elantra 
to Ryan, and he will and if you give you stole his an Elantra last night card. in Inglewood, you can go fuck yourself. You made you it way it to harder uh, to me to get to this thing. I had to ride the bus, and uh, which was fun. Uh, I do like riding the bus, but go fuck yourself still. I hope you get castrated and killed and get electrocuted. Woo! And then I'm going to steal a friend's story, but give them credit. But they had a thing happen where someone crashed into their car, and they couldn't drive it anymore. So they're like, okay, I have to take the bus to work. And they said they only did it once because it was such a surreal and weird experience. Like, so they get on immediately. There's a guy in the front of the bunch. Free, uh, there's a guy in the front of the bus freestyle rapping about jacking off. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so he's just like going, and it. she's like, "Okay." And they're like, "All right." And then, uh, as the bus ride continues, this one woman kept sitting down next to strangers with open seats next to them and going, "You catch Gotham last night." <laughs> and we live in an age of streaming where it's, there's not really appointment television past yeah. Game of Thrones or like prestige dramas and everyone was like turn <laughs> no I don't want to talk to you and then yes. she was like word okay and then would go down the bus and just like you uh you see got them and then they were like eventually like said to their girlfriend, like, you got to drive me to work. Getting shunned <laughs> no. by everybody. Yeah. Riding the bus is fun. It's waiting for the bus. To me, that sucks the most. Where it's just like, oh. you don't know when it's going to come. Yeah. Although it is now on the on Google Maps, it like shows you all. Yeah, the oh, really? it's a little it's a little fucky, but it worked. I was just in New York and it was delightful. Like I yeah. had a day where I was like, I'm going to go to this thrift store and try to yeah. find some earrings. And like got on the bus, went up, had just enough time to grab some bagels and then just get back on. And it yeah. was like- That's awesome. I haven't like taken that in a really long time. In my hometown, there was like two buses. And like, if you actually... didn't get on it once, then you're gonna have to wait an hour. And they were both privately owned by <laughs> people <laughs> who lived in your town. It's just, just a guy with around. a bus, yeah. Taking advantage yeah. of everybody. If you don't know, but, uh, the LA bus system kind of sucks. The, I mean, any transit stuff, yeah. The sunset, on sunset, which goes all the way across the city, it's really not, if you, if you need to go on sunset, the bus goes five minutes, mm -hmm. it's great, you know? But anywhere else, it's a fucking pain in the ass. Yeah. Well, but they, every American, can own a car. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> but that's why we don't have good public transit in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's because every American can and will own a car. Well, it's also been structured in such rides. a way through through lobbying that it it is so necessary and like it's just like messed up to go back to when like cars were first becoming prevalent especially in LA and like the auto bond society was like huge in lobbying and so yeah. like kill, kids were getting killed at a rapid pace in the early 1900s and rather than because you know the streets were not necessarily a car only zone yeah. like up until that point like kids played in the street and it was super normal yeah, it was just a thoroughfare exactly yeah exactly um funny story the dodgers are called as such because it's shortened from the brooklyn trolley dodgers because people used to have to jump out of the way of trolleys so it was kind of like a no holds barred lawless zone yeah. but also like kids didn't die as much and then all of a sudden cars start getting faster cars start getting heavier and instead of slowing down they were like we will tunnel under the streets so the children can go to school <laughs> so there's like there were a couple hundred you can see them still they're mostly all gated up outside of yeah. the school in la there's a lot of them on like olympic boulevard there are two stairways that go down underneath the street. Mm. Yeah. And the, the Audubon Society paid for most of them because it yeah. meant that the cars could go even faster. <laughs> and it was just like, well, your stupid kids yeah. shouldn't be in the street. That's for cars. Idiot. We were talking yeah. about- uh, What are we like, gonna do, not sell cars? <laughs> yeah. We were talking about uh, automated delivery drones <laughs> before we started this podcast. Yes. Cause like I saw a couple in RTX when we were in Austin, just like little, Little Robot Domino's wagon. dumpers, little like wagons, just driving. It's down funny the because sidewalk. the it's delivery the apps, dumpy ones, right? the yeah. delivery apps already see the people that work for them as yeah. little del delivery drones. Yeah, and like the we were taking a photo with a fan in the street, and we were blocking the path of this like food drone, <laughs> and it was just started flashing this extremely bright light at us, just like move, really? get out of the way. That feels Wait, like Star like Wars. Kind of no, it was flashing a bright, a bright light at us. Did you we kick like, the shit out of it? <laughs> no, I got scared. <laughs> oh, like uh, like uh, the hitchhike robot that got murdered and beheaded <laughs> oh, in Philadelphia. Oh God, I love that story. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, you fuck around and find out. <laughs> yeah. right? It traveled. There, someone built a little hitchhiking robot that traveled. It didn't move. The yeah. Like the span of Canada, every, all of Canada united. And can you turn that lamp on? Rick's sending us matches to turn that lamp. 
Uh, um, yeah, sure. Also, I, I, I just wanted to say that I was on a bus in Seattle and I saw a cute cat and I sent the picture to Rick. If, <gasps> if you want to put it up at all. You're in Seattle this weekend? Slack. No, no, no. This is oh. in May. Wow, that's a really good photo. Uh, anyways. Oh, there it is. This wow. robot traveled across the entire country of Canada. All of Canada united to hitchhike this robot from one, from okay. fucking Alaska all the way to Saskatchewan. Um, and then they said, you know what? We're going to do it in the United States as well. Three days into its trip, it was found broken apart, dead on the side of the road. <laughs> and where like, else? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. We don't take kindly to the robot revolution. Yeah. Mm -mm. It was a journey of astronomical proportions, sort of like when they the launched Eagles that trip to the Super Bowl. That's oh, exactly sorry. what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I misspoke. Go birds. Because <laughs> I want to talk about this dang telescope. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Cool I keep interrupting. Shit. Um, but I had. A I do have another robot anecdote, but I guess I'll yes, sit on it. Yes, I do it. want to hear that though. Um, but I was reading about this this telescope because there's some cool facts. I was reading the light version, which makes me feel stupid, anyways. Um, <laughs> oh, it's like the layman's. Yeah, version. there's like there's like frequently asked questions. Light rocket go thinking, yeah. big up <laughs> <laughs> and take camera yeah. like mommy had at it's, Disneyland. It's so much crazier than that because it's like. I guess it's an infrared telescope, which I guess is a big a big deal. Like a remote. Yes, exactly. Like a TV remote at home, like we all have. Um, but yeah, it uh, got launched, I guess, in December or something, and with the idea of um, observing galaxies and stuff forming in the distance. And it took a bunch of like super high res photos mm -hmm. and stuff. Some of which were of like, like a previously black spot in the sky. They're like, let's just aim it there and take a picture. And then it's got like- <laughs> They found everything. Yeah, then it's like, oh look, there's like 50 galaxies. Yeah, that's, that's why this telescope is so fucking nuts, is that it's so much stronger than all previous telescopes. Yeah. That like the amount of more, like more shit that we're gonna be able to see is astronomical. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's probably it's maybe inquantifiable. Whoa! Because is, this yeah. the, is this the light reading of? of <laughs> is this the light education? Yeah, this is keep light going. Light. Keep going. I'm just I'm just saying that they like you said they pointed at one black spot and found 50 fucking galaxies. Yeah. That's what one point zero 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 one percent of the sky. Yeah. Like holy it, shit! It's wild. Like it says here, like. Um, by viewing the universe at infrared wavelengths, Webb will show us things never before seen by any other telescope. And only at infrared wavelengths can we see the first stars and galaxies formed after the Big Bang. It's like weird. It's like looking back in time. Like we got, like I gave Rick some pictures because like you can download these like giant resolution images. Uh, Rick, can we put them on the TV behind Ryan there? They were, for well. those of you wanting to print these out, one, you should color correct them. Uh, <laughs> two, uh, they're about, they're 14,400 pixels wide, yeah. which at 300 DPI is four feet. Uh, so you could make, you could fill your entire apartment with giant posters yeah. of space. Stuff like this is weird. Like this is a bunch of, I like, want a James Webb fat head. <laughs> oh, cool. Aren't they owned by uh, Funko now? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Are no, there still like, loot this crates? This is like the, uh, what was this one called? The Carina Nebula or something, Rick? It's like, oh yeah, there it is. Looks like the Eagle Nebula to me. Go yeah. birds. I have a uh, layman's questions about yes. all this. Cause I don't know what I'm looking at really. Well, it's um, like, it's a giant cloud that's eight light years high. Eight light years high. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's already imperceptibly I don't... high. So uh, <laughs> light from the top of it to the bottom, it'll take light traveling at the speed of light uh -huh. eight years. To get from one into the other. Yeah. yeah. So that's. So, now, uh, big. That it's is big. That yeah. is big. Now, I feel like 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 Say this when. looks awesome, right? But haven't um, when I've seen like screensavers yeah. that that looked like this before? What was I looking at then? Uh, an artist's know? rendition. An artist's probably. rendition yeah. of this, and now but, this is or the real a much thing? lower resolution, less detailed from photo. like the Hubble and maybe cl closer like, Rick, stuff. Can you too, click into one of those? Like make them a hundred percent. That can't be the full. 100%, 100%, no doubt, no doubt. 
Whoa. Those don't look 100. percent These it looks are like a Geo. Oh, those yeah. look like those are low. I think those might be web versions. Or These something. are both James Webb. Web. Yeah. Well, I said uh, Rick's the full resolution. <laughs> oh, look, there's a goat. Yeah, um, <laughs> there he is. That's from the last one. That's a real goat. Hold on, go, yeah, go, go back call. to it real quick. That's go a callback to, to another. Yeah. Those ears are real, Jacob. Those are so long. The poor guy yeah. trips on them all the time. He trips on it. Oh, like Ow. a basset hound. I should, you know, I should Man watch like the whole shit. previous podcast right now, <laughs> just so I can give. You don't need to. We should name a new galaxy after after this goat. Yeah, that one with the two. That was like, um, it was a. What was the title? This was Zoom Out, Rick. I need, I think it's so crazy that like oh yeah with satellites that we just we send them out with these cameras mm. and they just continue to expand out until yeah. at a certain point we lose contact whether it's too far or it gets damaged or like some solar flare or whatever yeah but like assuming that without interference it will continue on forever they yeah. will oh, just yeah. expand out and go go forever satellites we launched in the 60s are still just going ever outwards yeah and it Didn't fucks me up this every picture, goddamn uh, time yeah. and then it comes through the bottom you know if it goes far enough that way it will come out yeah. the other end yeah like a keyboard on a switch or a tv yeah, or, or like a snake or, exactly this picture here like this is the one that was pointed at like a a black area in space Jesus and like Christ. this was crazy because you could see all these galaxies and you see like the weird like lensing of light yeah kind of around the middle that is from galaxies behind the ones that we are seeing bending the light okay i was wondering about coming that. towards us wait what like the, like you see how it's all yeah. warped like so there's like streaks and stuff yeah. yeah though that's galaxies behind the ones that we're seeing getting bent by the light of the ones that are closer to us. It's fucked up. It's I can't that make take sense. This, get this away from me. Yeah. <laughs> you can bend light, people. It's a lot to look at. Um, <laughs> I, oh, sorry. sorry go, you go. Well, so, okay, just Ryan, to clarify. Ryan, you keep pointing yeah. it up away past your face. <laughs> well, it keeps going down to my, to my Yeah, that neck. one's kind of yeah. fucked just up. Just like, right. just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so we are on Earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we are in the solar system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Milky Way. In the Milky so Way. The, in the, the Milky Way is all the nine planets. No, no that's no, our solar that's system. That's the solar system. Okay, the Milky the solar Way is the system, galaxy. Yeah. The solar system is in the Milky Way, yeah. which yeah. has lots of solar systems. Yeah. And But and there's only one galaxy, in the, and we're in the Milky Way. Yeah. And then the Milky Way is in the universe. Yes. The Milky Way is a small galaxy. Like, Rick, bring <laughs> up bring up uh, that, that one that was pointed at the black spot again. Yeah, the one with all um, those galaxies. And so... Every single, I know all this. I was just so, re re yeah, clarifying yeah, yeah. So for everyone. Every home. single one of those little things. Well, not every single one. Well, you experience the fullness like, of the universe more yeah. than most, I would say. <laughs> like, look, look at the top I right. Am. I'm There's a that swirly thing. You're a space traveler, uh, man. Right there, that swirly thing. Uh huh. That's an entire galaxy. And fucked up worm Most galaxy. of all of these things are, are either galaxies or in their own galaxy separate from everything else. Wow. And there are multiple stars in every galaxy. Uh Mil maybe millions. not everyone, but yeah. A Do lot. you think there's a there's or a actually, there's a future where we could everything. like where we could travel and stay at the galaxy's edge? What? Oh. We can yeah. right now actually. It'll take forever. Oh, cool. Really? All How you much? Gotta do is drive to Anaheim. How much is it? Oh, <laughs> uh, an Uber would probably be like 40. No, to stay there. Oh, to stay there? Oh yeah, we have probably well, the ship we'd have to take would probably say cost like I think three grand per person for a three night stay. Yeah. That's not bad, I guess, yeah. for space. For space, yeah, yeah for real. For space. Anaheim, mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're talking about the Star Wars hotel, everybody. I've been listening to Galaxy Edge, a lot. or, I, or I think well, I'm I guess halfway through the second book. Which yeah, the first book was like fifty hours, and then every book after that is twenty. Is he so reading like, faster? No, Are I think he figured it? out how to make the larger story smaller little, just like... Yeah, great series. series. Wonderful series. Um, but, yeah, that's really getting me... So this is, like, all up in my business yeah. right now. And in that series, like, they don't even, at least for a while, don't even leave the solar system. No. It takes them forever to just get from, like, like the beyond the asteroid belt to yeah. Earth. It just takes and like that, months. Well, aren't those... Uh, well, where did the rim jobs live? Those guys, the, the, outer, the outer rim, jobs? Uh, the Camino ones? The belt, which is like it, belters. It, it's like Belt halfway out yeah. the solar system. There's a, like a giant belt of asteroids, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some of them live there. Some of them live like on a 
like smooth, smaller boons of I know their lives are like bad because they're all stringy and yeah, gravity has fucked them up gravity. but like I wish I looked like that like Elizabeth Debicki <laughs> well, yeah, it's not that they're fucked up it's just that they can't really they're not going to do well on planets yeah because they've grown up in point three Look, gravity squished. or even less they're yeah. so skinny they're like yeah, Mike and TV long. The exactly like Mike TV after the TV situation after the TV situation after they put him in the taffy puller yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and one of the one of the things that blows my mind, like Charlotte, you're talking about with the the Voyager and stuff, just traveling forever. If you're not actively accelerating, you're in zero g. So even though, like, the way that it works, so that they can simulate gravity, and a lot of one of the cool things about the Expanse is that it's he uses a lot of what like JPL and like space engineers of nice today, hikes at JPL. Right? Yeah. Uh, that of today, that it's all theoretically sound. That, like, if we did have the money and everything to go to space, this is how we would do stuff in space. And one of those things is how to simulate gravity in a spaceship is that they're all built vertically like a building. Yeah. And they all go like this. So um, basically, you accelerate to simulate gravity. But then when you're halfway to your destination, you do what's called a flip and burn, or at least what they call it on the show. Yeah, of course. Where you, where you turn your vehicle what completely I do around, and then you decelerate for the second half of the trip. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which looks strange in the show, because they like, they'll like show like a destination they're arriving at, and then they'll sort of ship, the ship flies by backwards. Yeah. Because yeah, they're, yeah. They're, yeah. <laughs> so like, you see the ship going backwards. But it's because they flipped and they're, yeah. they're decelerating. And then, and then also in the middle of like all the episodes, they'd be like, "I would be Alex going, all right, doing a flip and burn." Like, <laughs> that's how I get to. That? That's how I get to work. Do a flip and burn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Same that's the other thing. Principle. You can literally accelerate up to two hundred thousand miles per hour in space, and you won't feel it. Once you stop Sweet. accelerating, you're just floating. Free in space. Remember, there's a thing in one of the later books where, like, they were under thrust and a character didn't want to sit down just because of like some frantic situation. So she's standing there. She's like, "I have to hold perfectly still, or if I like move wrong, my knees will collapse underneath me <laughs> oh <my laughs> if I'm standing up like this while we're accelerating faster than one g." It's good. <laughs> gnarly stuff. Space is scary. Yeah, space that's is the, real scary. That's the other thing. I didn't realize that a g was nine point eight meters. Oh. Sorry. It's true, too. We're talking about space, too. <laughs> you can start over. Sorry. You know on Goliath? Have you ridden on... Take two. Have you been to Six Flags? A couple times, yeah. You know when you ride Goliath? Uh-huh. And you go over the top, and it pulls you up, and you feel that with... That's a negative G. That was my only connection to what Gs were, was in relation to roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my Gs are kicking it constantly. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, do that sometimes. Did you ever ride the David? It just slings you out. Into the the David. <laughs> is, it the, yeah. is it the slingshot, like the slingshot one that, uh, that would be cool. they put yes. a camera on and then only let women with like low tops on? <laughs> have you seen those? It's They have entire YouTube accounts where the only videos they upload are like, you know, the women that when it when they launch, of course, with because of physics, things. No, Rick. <laughs> bad, bad, Rick. Well, the problem with the Dave is it keeps knocking down the the, the Goliath, the Goliath coaster. coaster. They have to yeah, keep rebuilding just keeps it every flinging time. bodies into yeah. it. That's funny. We're having a good time. <laughs> yeah, that's a wait. Ride Goliath ride. has killed people. What? No, David kills Goliath. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We've made it. We've made it there, everybody. Welcome to Funhouse's premiere yeah. podcast about the classics. <laughs> What is the David? The fun house of learning? What? What is the David? I'm just making a joke because he used a sling to kill Goliath. It was a joke, John. Uh, uh, (laughs) Did you see the... (laughs) So impatient with that. Did you see the video where, like, they... Blew that one up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or you know, they, or they, they blew they show, up the satellite. Already. They they show you how far that 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 image is zoomed in. Yeah, to basically. it's crazy. And they're like, and basically, there's a million of those yeah. right there. It's so is that, that one that crazy. starts on human skin or whatever. I don't know. No, it's it zooms into that image. Of this image. It zooms into oh. this image. Yeah, sure. One of these. Yeah. yeah. Well, it like, begs the question, though. I mean, what, this is what this I assume is all leading to. Are we alone? Let's go down the list. Jacob, are we alone? In like the whole universe. The whole universe. Are there are there 
is there other life? And, and then furthermore, is there sentient, intelligent life? Oh, 100%. I think there is. I don't think we'll ever see it. Yeah, really? I, I'm on the same page as Jacob in that there is other life, but we are alone. Yeah. <laughs> we are. We'll never see it. Yeah. It's like, well, you because, you know, it, you can yeah. stay in your house all day, and there's, there's people like outside a, on the street, but if you're not going outside, yeah. you're alone. There's, there's, okay. a, there's a, f- Good a point. name for this concept that I don't remember. I'm sure Car- people uh, the Is it the it. same? It's, oh, never mind. What were you going to say? I was going to talk about carcinicization, where that's everything crab just crabs. Though, right? yeah. Yeah. Just because I like talking about it. Yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. I can't wait to be a crab someday. What is the... We'll take oh, a brief oh, that, about carcinization. That, we're, that there, statistically, there has to be life, but it is completely irrelevant to our existence yes, or whatever. Yes, because like, in order for us to find life that is similar to us, they would have to have developed at the same time at the same pace basically yeah. be nearby be able to like communicate and stuff be at the same like level of cognition that we are at um just coincidentally in this universe where things just form randomly but 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 w- 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 uh you're saying for us to actually meet these people and stuff because i mean theoretically they're gonna be a much higher uh, intelligent life form that is gonna find us and yeah like we could be up. behind this one but like they there's no telling where the heck they might be in this universe. Uh-huh. So, like, if they exist, and there's, like, I'm sure there is somewhere, like, uh, higher, like, more intelligent beings or no, even more somewhere. No, intelligent like, than me. That's true. Nothing smarter than Charlotte. But if they're out there, then, like, they might be somewhere so far away that we'll never possibly. Like, they, the Big Bang happened, and they got formed on the opposite side of the universe, yeah. going in the opposite direction, farther away from us every day. What I'm excited about is to see, because uh, we currently have, like, recorded, confirmed thousands of planets that exist within the habitable zone. Goldie which, locks. for those of you that don't know, is where my, we my exist. basement. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a. Welcome, dudes. It's different for each <laughs> to star. The it depends zone. on the habitable strength zone. of the star, but it's. Where you can, where your planet can be in orbit, that it can actually manage life without being frozen or burned to death, like an actual like existing an atmosphere can exist. Yeah, uh, sustaining sustaining life. Yeah, possibly an atmosphere that can sustain life because other places have atmospheres. Yeah, um, and I'm curious to see that they they take this James Webb and turn it towards those planets because most of those planets we can't see we we know they're there and we can see them but we can't get a detailed picture and i wonder how much stronger this one is like if we took the closest planet that's within the habitable zone we aim james webb at it can we see oh, like the surface yeah can we see like an alien scratching its butt or something I'm, yeah well i'm confused by the scale of this telescope and camera what it's able to accomplish like how <sighs> How far would you have to go, or is it possible to get like a high res picture of someone's butthole? Mm. Like, oh, yeah. is there enough flat area on Earth, or would the Earth's rotation stand in the way yeah. of getting a picture? Well, of it's an butt? also it's an it, infrared telescope, oh. so like, would it even see something? Would it even person? see a butthole? Yeah, yeah. Oh. it just might be just seeing light and, and it's, stuff. It well, how be, you don't know anything about me? Yeah. I could have a light emitting. Don't worry about it. It's it's true. (laughs) Because of the because of it's so close, it might be like when you when I tried to take a picture of my butthole, it was the camera was too close and it wouldn't focus on it. Did you look in a mirror or did you just like Yeah, it was Yeah, it's like that Jason Mraz song where he's been bending over backwards just to see Uh it clear. (laughs) Jason Mraz was playing in Sprouts yesterday. What? Yeah, and I I texted people about saying you love Jason Mraz? And none of them replied because they, they don't. What's, don't. Well, tell me afterwards which Sprouts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to hear which I, I Sprouts that, afterwards. I bet you that Burbank in the future. Uh, oh, I like, know that one. There's oh. going to be a James Webb like quality telescope on your, on iPhone? your iPhone. Like So, yeah, you'll be able to take it. Yeah, be if like you want to take a selfie, iPhone. you have to put it 8,000 miles away. <laughs> yeah, it's a normal-sized iPhone, but it's got a massive infrared telescope attached to the yeah, camera. It's like those attachments. Can we take one moment before the ad break to just yeah. uh, really, you know, um, soak up and be grateful for how we got 
born in the Goldilocks zone. You know, oh, 100%. Like, like how fucked up and awesome is that? Even when you're on Earth and your car gets fucking stolen and you're and things suck, yeah. you're in the Goldilocks zone. You still zone, get so to do should... a podcast that people don't listen to. Yeah. You still so do. Be grateful. We're, lucky. You're, we're in the Goldilocks zone. We're lucky as Except fuck. Except for you. Yeah. And I love you. And on are top you talking of that, aliens that are watching this outside of the Goldilocks zone. Oh wait, never mind. They should was, have sent a poet. I was gonna say, and on top of that, we were born in a time where isn't the there baby aren't like a hundred diseases that can kill you immediately, and your parents have to have a dozen kids just so that three of them will survive into. Well, adulthood. we're getting back to that. Yeah, we are. Yeah, well, I mean, that was right. I was about to say that, and then I was like, "Oh wait." Yeah. <laughs> to Ryan's point, a lot of people. The vaccine was a yeah. miracle too. A lot of people look at those pictures and they feel really tiny and insignificant. But I think it's cool as hell that we are in this time where we can actually comprehend the scope of it. Oh fuck yeah! yeah. Just look cool at a picture of like dust or something to counteract it. Yeah. Feel big. Yeah. Well, um, Horton hears a who. Mm -hmm. We'll I, be back after this ad break. <laughs> When you're running a small business, every second counts. You can't afford to waste a single moment. So why are you still taking time out of your day to go to the post office when you could be using Stamps.com instead? Stamps.com makes mailing and shipping quick, easy, and cost-effective. Streamline your shipping process with Stamps.com's easy-to-use software. All you need is your regular computer and printer. No special supplies or equipment. You're up and running in minutes, printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. Plus, Stamps.com seamlessly works with Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and more. So whether you're an office sending invoices, an Etsy shop sending your products, or a warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com is your mailing and shipping solution. Stop wasting time and start saving money when you use Stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up with promo code FHPOD for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter FHPOD. Uh. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, here is something that I brought up before but couldn't remember what it was. It might have been in the podcast last week. Study maps the odd structural similarities between the human brain and the universe. Uh, Rick, if you bring up, there are pictures comparing them. Bring up, just search map of universe versus human brain, the way that their neurons are all mapped out. You know, like the bodies exhibit where they like freeze dry oh, all body the blood vessels or whatever yeah, and then melt works. away the From blood from Casino the Royale. Or when they have oh all yeah, Casino Royale. Right? <laughs> has, has a body those keywords again? Scene. Uh, it's map of universe versus map of brain. Uh, <laughs> this Sunday. And it's basically so, the of structure universe. of how the universe is versus <laughs> how all the neurons in our brain are look very similar. We've got universes in us. Yeah, so that's what I always think about. It's like... If that's if our if the universe is shaped exactly like our brain or whatever, then what if the the entire universe is just a some brain. alien's brain? Yeah. yeah, Men in Black did this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, Dude, that movie probably watched it more than any <laughs> other movie ever. It was the Fermi paradox. That's the the phrase I was looking for for the alien uh, existence. Oh, okay. Fermi paradox. All right, uh, you guys ready to come back from this ad break? What? <laughs> We are I back. thought we were already back from no. the ad break. Yeah, we've been back. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Rick's just fucking with us. I just talked about the fucking brain! Yeah. <laughs> I thought I had my car stolen once. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was living in Philly, and I parked on my street. Mm -hmm. uh, Bouvier. I can say that, because it's been seven years. Don't dox yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doxing someone. But like, I got up, and I was going to ride my bike to class, and I was like, oh, let me just go check on the car couldn't hurt and then I like like walk my bike up the street the car is gone the car is just gone it's my Buick I have a tattoo on my leg of it oh <laughs> to remember it by but I found it but like that's good anyway like yeah so I'm like no 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 and like I saw like a backhoe and like a hole in the street where some guys were working and I was like hey you didn't happen to see a gray Buick Sentry here did you and the guy just goes, oh, yeah, we moved it along with all the others. And I look, 
all the cars are gone. And I'm like, Move what? It. And they're working on the other side of the street from where my car was. And mind you, there was no sign posted. <laughs> there was no uh, warning. They did. I think the backhoe was like parked on the street, but that was normal because there was always street work happening. And they were like, oh yeah, yeah, I got moved. And I was like, <laughs> to where? And he was like, let me find out. And this whole time he's in a pit, I'm standing on the street looking down at him. And he calls like the local like precinct because they have stuff and he's like, what kind of car is it? I was like, oh, it's like a beige Buick Century. He's like, huh? And he's like, oh, I found it, but all the wheels are gone. And I was like, what? And he goes, I'm just kidding. And I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I was like, ha ah. oh, ha ha I love <laughs> I like, that guy. Where is it? And he said, it's on 20th, which is two and a half blocks down. And I was like, <laughs> get all the way over. Or no, 27th. They moved it almost 10 blocks. And oh I was like, God. okay. So I just like walked my bike down and found my car and I was like, what the hell? And I'm like, or I walked without my bike and I had my keys and I went to go in and then some guy was just on his porch and he's like, is that you? Is that your car? I was like, yes. And he said, they have been towing them down here for days. So they just, the without hell? warning, just came in and went, we gotta get these cars out of here. And just towed them <laughs> 10 blocks down and left them in front of this guy's house. That's Jesus. insane. And then two weeks later, I go outside, car is gone and like, there's like maybe a blip of panic, and then I was like 27th Street. And I just walked there. down, and it was there. Yeah. Oh my god. It was god. so funny. Yeah. I was just like <laughs> so annoyed. But the second time, I was like, well, that's life. They just take. They just, yeah. they just take your car and just move it. Yeah. Just no warning. They're just like, let's get in a tow truck and move every single car. You're right. You should check your street for any pits with dudes. With and guys. Like, well, yeah. Honestly, uh, when car. she said that, I was like. Every car, uh, that that whole side was empty. Like the side that my car was on. Was you should though? check because no, it's, it's possible. No, it's Wednesday, but why would they have done that? I don't <laughs> you know. know, see if there's construction crews around. Huh. Maybe, just Wait, in is case. that, I mean, can you think back of other days you come out, has that street been clear? Like maybe it's just everyone works the nine They five. did construction on that street about a month ago. Oh God. I mean, oh. but oh, like no. it's not recently. Oh, no. You should, Look up where 27th Street is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do commend you for being here at all. Yeah, because, I would like, not have been here. I today. would be face down in my bed after talking to the cops. Just like, I would be weeping. What am I going to do? I'm calling my dad. I'm hyperventilating. I just, I just, really? Yeah. What? Oh. Yeah. Oh. I was just like, it's okay. I'm in the Goldilocks zone. Everything's fine. <laughs> That's true. Again, is it not work. the baby bear zone? Scoldilocks <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. had to go through, oh, I guess we've had hot and cold periods it's, on it's Earth. Fine, yeah. <laughs> We're in the hot one right now. People are like literally dying. This ice age is Europe much too stuff. hot. Yes. Cold. This one is just right. And this one is just right. This land bridge is just right. Yes. From Eurasia to the Americas. Yeah, whatever giant bear is looking at the Earth right now, it's like too hot. I'll wait till they're all dead. <laughs> oh, the, you mean the megafauna that yes. has since gone extinct from our <laughs> continent. Oh, I, I had a crazy. random idea for a sci-fi book and I, or a story, and I was wondering if it existed because I feel like it probably should, or at least in some capacity. And it was that uh, a bunch of giant aliens come to our planet and just ignore us. Like, they just <laughs> come to the planet and they're like, we live here now, but they just, just like, we're so, we're so inconsequential. Oh, like the giants from Green Knight where there's cold? Yeah. More like just whales. like we're we're less than ants to them. We're just I don't know. Less yeah. than ants. I feel like that's less. a lot of alien invaders. It's like, yeah, get these out of here. Yeah, but more, but not in a violent way. Like we need to clear the planet of these little creatures. Oh, like just, they just plop down. They literally move in, start doing their thing, and no matter what we do, no matter what, the, the government unites to be like, we gotta at least let them know that we exist because they're ignoring <laughs> us. How, bi how big? That's the thing. I don't know. Because, like, you know, there's there's a range, right? Because, like, if there's a small kind of big, there could be... Yeah, like, they're all nine feet tall. Kind of they're all nine feet tall, and when you do this, they, yeah, <laughs> they look yeah. up and just ignore you. I'm just saying, like, yeah. nine feet tall, you could probably get, like, an interspecies thing going on. hey -oh. Or, like, a The Boys thing going on. Oh, I have seen whatever Christ. that is. Oh, there's some oh wait, no, episode yeah, one seen of seen season that. three. Uh, yeah, there's some small. Am I caught up? It's yeah. not a spoiler or yeah. anything. It's just something that happened. Finished the series and I've, I enjoyed it very much. Me too. Um, 
What was I gonna say? But yeah, space space is scary. Space is scary. Yeah. I I have a satellite tattoo. I was thinking about like when I was thinking about how scary space is. I was thinking about you playing Hard Space Shipbreaker, mm-hmm. the game that you you've been evangelizing quite a yes. bit. Yes, and, and I, I played a little bit. And it's great. So, is that yeah. the music one? No. You uh you work in a salvage yard in outer space. Yeah. And you have a set of tools and you just break down an entire ship and when you're done with it, basically it's like being in the clean plate club. The whole ship is gone. You've thrown yeah. it into incinerators and processors. But you can also like try to yank out like a seat from the inside. This is what I was thinking about. And you just pull off the um you just pull off the seat because you have to yank it, but I did it towards me and it just like and just hit me in the <laughs> helmet shattered your, shattered your the helmet glass open. of my helmet and I had to like <gasps> try to get oh. back and you have like a grappling laser and I just couldn't get back inside my habitat and I died in space yeah but they Trying to take but they clone you and it puts you further into debt oh <laughs> this sounds awesome and like something I would really enjoy it's, it's so chill. sick Rick has played it it's a yeah. super sick game yeah, yeah it's, it's so really chill good. We were just hanging out. Like Rick and I were playing it, and Jacob was playing either was playing Wow or Elite Dangerous. Danger. Elite Dangerous, yeah. yeah. It was it also was, having a chill. It was a great time. time. There's nothing like playing games individually and independently, but being on Discord. That's yeah. we we did that uh, during a certain situation during. <laughs> <laughs> it was the pandemic. Yeah, it was the pandemic. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I really liked that. Yeah. But then that's never. I've never done that. Since we were then. playing Hades at the time, yeah, we, we were, were all playing all Hades, playing Hades, oh, Hades together. So yeah, we were all Hades streaming it at each other. I think yeah. I'm gonna then, get back into it when I get my new Switch. Yeah. Yeah. And then every now and then, someone would be like, "I'm at this boss," and so the other three of us we'd just pause yeah, and just watch, like, watch them. them. Yeah, and then they die. Yeah, <laughs> and then we go all right back. For us, it was like I'd be just like doing Elite Dangerous. I was just flying around. Rick was doing spaceship stuff and hard space shipbreaker. So it's like, oh yeah, I'm taking apart this. Like, ah, fuck. Because <laughs> like something had hit you. I kept face. I kept yanking off these huge like drywall sheet sized panels and they would go whoop, 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 and smack me in the forehead. Yeah, and then you'd be like, oh god, again. oh god, I gotta get back. Oh god. Yeah, yeah. When you when you first started talking about the chair, you said that you pulled it towards you, and I imagined that you were in VR. Or like I thought that's what you're saying. That would be a you sick VR yourself game. In the face. Yeah. No, oh, although once crazy. when I was playing super hot. I did this like dope maneuver where like I spun around, kneeled on one knee, and just punched a guy in the dick, and then didn't realize that there was a, I had kneeled to desk level and just punched a glass. <laughs> it didn't hurt. It didn't you hurt because I'm something. made of stronger stuff and also had a plastic thing, and I just like and the, and the, the glass just like went straight off the desk. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I gotta be more careful. Super hot rock. Super too. hot's the only one where I lost the disconnect between real life where. I was hiding behind a crate, shooting, and then I went up to lean on it, and I literally just I've done that all too. my way. I, I went, <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. fell over because it's crazy. I yeah. thought all I put all of my way into a box that didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. have that one gotta, super hot gameplay. Play more like, VR. Watching Ryan play it is pretty fantastic. Oh yeah, we did like an editor's thing when everyone yeah. was gone for Not Arizona peak. Circle or something. Yeah, Ryan also delivered presents in VR. Oh, that was really fun. <laughs> yeah, we should do more VR. I love VR. I do love the VR Ryan stuff. VR. I did Hitman VR, and it was one of the worst experiences I've ever had in VR. <laughs> I love. It's really not good. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, IO Interactive. <laughs> I like VR gameplays in group settings because uh, it's it doesn't matter how cool you are, you look like a fucking idiot in yeah. VR. A hundred percent. Do you play Elite Dangerous in VR? I have before. Games where you're in a cockpit are fun. Yeah, games where you can sit, sit down and not go anywhere. Yeah. VR makes mm. a lot of sense. I played a bunch of No Man's Sky in VR. And that it's is like cool. great when you're in the cockpit, especially because like it's you don't play with a controller. Like there's controls inside that you like grab and stuff in the ship to like move around. Oh. Yeah. And that feels cool. And then to get out of the cockpit, you like lift it up to get out. That's so sick. And then like you have a little scanner when you're on foot and you have to like touch near your head. So you're like boop, 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 boop. And it's cool, but when I'm on foot, I got pretty nauseous. That's yeah. the only time I've gotten nauseous in a VR game. I mean, too. doing the like walking thing doing instead the of teleporting thing, yeah. thing. I did it with. It wasn't Half Life, Alex. I wonder if I did like Doom or something. I think oh, I God. tried some Doom and like walked, and I was like, "Oh no, this is not gonna work yeah. for me." Did you ever play the Bone Works? Yeah, a little. It might have been that one. I don't know. My eyes are not like 
I don't know. I have trouble with like vision in VR, and I think it's because of whatever cocktail my prescription mm -hmm. is. I bought the prescription lenses for the inside of it, but like, oh, oh I, I, I just take it. my lenses off. I guess because I'm nearsighted, it's fine. Yeah, I'm farsighted. That makes so sense. like up close is like really tough. So I can't really play for long, and I have to like really fuck with the mm. settings. But damn, now you're making me want. I've not, honestly not touched my Oculus in a year. Yeah. Did you ever do like Star Wars Squadrons in VR? No, I didn't. That's where I was bad at the fight controls. Like, and you're getting chased by yeah. Tie Fighters and stuff, and you can like look up and see. Yeah, it, well, that was, that was the thing. I felt ah! like, a, yeah, like I'm too. I'm shit at that game, and I still was shit. But I felt like I had much more awareness because when I was flying, it when I'd get shot from the side instead of just going, oh shit, oh shit, where's that coming from? Yeah. I could look and see the person go, oh fuck, and I'd yeah. be able to maneuver and like. They should have done a them. Top Gun Maverick experience. Oh, that would have been sick, where you can look up and go. <laughs> I well, bet that's you a, that's watching it in Screen X, where they project it on the walls. Oh, mm -hmm. there has to be a YouTube Don't do 360 ever. video that you can. I watched the in a fighter on. jet. Oh yeah, yeah I think they're da up, David Blaine did a. 360 video where he gets in a balloon. Ooh. He just rides balloons up into space. <laughs> like a big balloon or like a thousand? It, I think balloons. it's many balloons, like up. Like up? Yeah, he's just tied on. No, the I end. really think it is. He yeah. He says seat. goodbye. To, he says goodbye to his daughter. Oh my god. Goes up. I he's the guy that like froze himself, right? You go. I was just gonna say I, I edited a whole video of y'all playing a VR game not in VR. The Pirates of the Asteroid Belt. Oh yeah, was so that a VR I, game? I'm pretty sure it was. Are we supposed sucks. to be playing it in VR? Yeah. Is that the oh. one that just came out? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know, like so every like... few years, or maybe not every few years, maybe it's gone down, but I swear growing up, every few years you'd hear about some fucking dumbass in their backyard doing this with like a lawn chair or something. Uh, usually they die, uh, but I remember one when I was in elementary school, it was some dude went up and then eventually came back down like 20 miles away. <laughs> 20 years older. Yeah. 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 Have you seen, like, uh, well, not have you seen, you remember Balloon Kid? Balloon Kid, yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. Have you seen like the internet historian video about that? Was it no, internet historian? I haven't. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But like talking about how like it probably wasn't a hoax, but the media like kind of took off with it and like it's kind of just ruined that guy forever. Oh really? Yeah, because like the kid in an interview said, "Well, yeah," just like offhand, just like that he was. It was like for a show or something. Because they like, the had previously. Because they, yeah, they had yeah, previously that's done was, something that, to make a video. Yeah, his dad was. He was one of those YouTube dads where he was like, "I'm gonna make my family into celebrities." Yeah. Maybe it wasn't for YouTube, but it was it was that mentality of like yeah. the family as a talent vessel. Yeah. Um, and then because the kid said that one thing on camera, then they're like, this whole thing is fake because this is the show the kid is talking about. Wait, what's fake? Like the, the getting balloon in the boy. balloon thing. But he yeah. was really in the balloon. Right? No, he wasn't. No. no, he was hiding in the attic or something. Oh, yeah. That yeah, was the yeah, whole yeah. thing in that. So all these resources like hundreds of thousands of dollars for firefighters and yeah. like getting helicopters out and everything. It's an interesting video. Very interesting. Yeah. Like Dude, I love story fucking story. internet historian. He's yeah. so good. He did one on Invisible Children, the the whole Coney 2012 thing, which I worked at Invisible Children up like up until like a year before Coney 2012. <laughs> um, and for Coney 2012 itself, he got pretty much everything spot on correct mm -hmm. yeah that's a that was a ride that was i was in high school at the time or no i wasn't yes i no i wasn't but i just remember that was big a lot of people were on facebook yeah i so. posted i was like we got to stop this guy <laughs> we got to do children, something about this monster i think i was like watching avatar at home <laughs> and i was like what the fuck we got to this this is terrible Coney, yeah, or the, yeah. just Invisible Children. I think I kicked in money too. Oh yeah, like yeah. it blew up with high schools, churches, and colleges. Like, it 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 was going crazy, like gangbusters or whatever. Because and like, Jason explained this to me why they, it was so successful, and it was like, holy shit, that's true. And it was that instead of like UNICEF and stuff where they show just like from a distance they're videotaping all these disfortunate people in third world countries being like, I don't know what the right word is. 
I'm not an English person. Um, it's non fortunate. Instead of being like, you need to save this child that we're videotaping on a Ill Zoom one so we yeah. don't have to smell them. Um, <laughs> it was showing a young white person going to Africa and forming a relationship with a person that it made it a personal thing. And it was also like a vessel, or not a vessel, what's the, an avatar for all of these, all of these American white people to go, oh my God, I could be that white person. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was, it was that connection that made people actually able to care about people in other, mm -hmm. like, in like charity or for a scam. Yeah. 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 Are you that hey, white they person? They put like in? over 800 kids through school. So like whatever like the scam was, it was more just that they were young 20 somethings and didn't know how to run a fucking business and ran it into the ground. After all these years, you're carrying the torch. I am carrying the torch. <laughs> I've always wanted Hold to a make a light. video about invisible children because it was such a fucking clusterfuck. Yeah. It sounds wild. Are you that white person, Ryan? Am I that white person? <laughs> yeah. What does that mean exactly? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, My, I like charities. Have you have you seen uh, any internet historian? Uh, yeah, I have. A, 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 listening to you talk about them though makes me want to go watch more of them. Dude, um, all of them are so good. I didn't watch I the COVID Smut ones. Smut Cave. Mm. Smut Cave. Yeah, Smut, Smut Cave. Smut Cave. He's my internet oh, historian I've heard of from that. Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh. The spelunker. Uh, he just chronicles he has a uh, funny uh episodes on just the dumbest degenerate shit from the internet oh but hell yeah anyway. i watch a philly youtuber he talks about you know urban planning and infrastructure and transit mostly transit guy really likes trains Ooh. oh i know a number shout of out josh he really like trains we're twitter mutuals Oh, very nice. Um, you were talking about those we were talking about those uh those robots i was saying that i was thinking they should have little cow catchers on them the ones that go on the streets, the delivery robots. Just plow people just, out of the way. Yeah, just plow them out of the way. <laughs> move, move, burrito in yeah. route. Cattle, be gone. Um, there's what? another one called Down the Rabbit Hole, I think it is. Uh, it's a YouTube channel where he does the, it's like a deep dive and stuff. But it's like, it's like he's, you're re he's reading an encyclopedia entry for what it is like there's no fluff or entertainment mm. he's literally just relaying all of the information like every video is over an hour long or it's just him just talking <laughs> there's um that, oh. no you go ahead i, I was just that, that, that's how i feel about it. has anyone watched like the literally 65 part youtube documentary chris series chan. on chris chan yep, yeah yeah and no. it's just like uh uh it is like you're it's every piece of detail yeah. that, from the whole saga, which I'm glad someone has chronicled, but at the same time, I'm like, come on, man, you gotta Someone, yeah, someone needs this to cut thing. this thing down. Yeah, and the yeah, that, that is a thing with YouTube where a lot of people don't really self-edit uh, because it's so self-published, which a lot of time results in really interesting and cool, expansive pieces of uh, art and commentary, yeah. but also sometimes it's like, hey, this didn't need to be two and a half hours. Yeah. Like, I get, I get it, you can, but yeah. that doesn't mean you should. Or it's if it's sometimes, old enough, it's 15, 10-minute videos. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's the, my inner editor and outer mm -hmm. editor speaking, but I'm just yeah. like, come on, let's do some cutting. Let's do some snipping. Yeah. We did this anecdote already. You're repeating your point. Yeah. I know. It's like with content or, or with people who aren't content creators or whatever or, or are pursuing a content, whatever the Content fuck. creation I degree. I don't know how to talk. <laughs> um, that is like a common thing, and it makes sense. It's like, yeah, okay, like – my PlayStation stopped reading the disc and in an effort to find a solution, I went to YouTube and I had to watch like 12 different videos where I was skipping through because it was an eight minute long video where yeah. the first six minutes is him going, so my mom like brought this, like she had this cake and it was really delicious, but so the sick, like I've been playing Fortnite a lot and like it's just them yeah. just like ranting <laughs> yeah. and then being like okay so anyways what I did and when it turned out after six minutes it was you put the disc in and then as it's reading it you turn it on its side and then end of video <laughs> yeah that's why I've been watching uh, Tom Scott he's, uh, he's oh yeah, yeah. He, his videos not are like five Tom Scott. not Tom Scott his videos are like five minutes mm. all of them and they're just about interesting things and like weird geography and architecture and science and there's even one that's a video about the most expensive object by weight 
and the video starts and he goes, he just goes, it's a stamp. If you're here for the answer to the question, it's a stamp. <laughs> but if you want to know more, keep watching. And he just talks for like three or four minutes and I was like, that's cool. I respect <laughs> that. I feel like that's a really good Tom Scott hand impression. Like whenever he, he I feel like he does this. Yeah, look. he's like, it's a stamp. Yeah. <laughs> so there's something yeah. really interesting about ice. <laughs> yeah. I love that fucking guy. He's, he's it's really him. good. It's not over embellished. He doesn't really use music. It's usually just a stand up, talk to camera in a location. He says, here's what's happening. Here's why it's happening. Here's what could happen. And they are like yeah. a few minutes. Cause like, I can't really do like long video essays. Mm -hmm. Like I have so much trouble focusing like shit like contra points. She's just like, I can't watch an hour and a half video on JK Rowling. Yeah. I just I just can't. Like we we can do this faster. And a lot of times it's like artistic uh license and embellishment and it's just a, like a little bit much, but I'm just like I, it's too long. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. the, the only exception to that is I'll watch if if you're familiar with John Boyce mm -hmm. at Secret Base, which is part of SB Nation. He does like space or he's sports videos. Never mind. But they're they're really good and they're like really interesting about like larger picture stuff. And he has a long like mixed media series that's like writing, video, gifs, um, and like it's like twenty six parts about basically space and the meaningless of life and like the importance of play. Because like once you've accomplished everything, what's left? What's the point of living? And it's like, well, enjoying things, play. And so it's a series about football, but like it's also about, <laughs> it's narrated from the viewpoint of three satellites. And like I said, I do have a tattoo of Web? one of them, but like it's called 17776. And it's like this super cool series about, I've talked about it on the podcast mm. before probably, it's another thing I evangelize. But like, it's a really interesting take on just like peering through space Except it's the other way. It's the yeah. satellites that have drifted eons away, looking, turning around and looking back oh, at so Earth. So this is fiction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it's mixed media. You're saying. It's yeah. It's totally okay. mixed media. It's like you gotta look at it in a web browser. I yeah. think mobile would break your phone. Yeah. <laughs> I I initially thought you were talking about another educational channel, and when you when it, you threw in gifts, I was like, what? You no, know, it is. <laughs> I was trying to. Think. It is fiction, but it is also like, feels non-fiction-y in a way where it's like because of the delivery method I, I honestly like was just trying to find a segue to talk about this guy <laughs> yeah and what he makes but also like the way he expands it out and talks about space like i feel like is really pertinent to the like subject material of the podcast oh, yeah. With yeah. This james webb james webb telescope something to get in your brain and think about it's just really interesting it's yeah. just so cool because like if it does make you feel small you can understand though that like you make your own reason to be here like you find you make worth life worthwhile regardless of how much endless universe there is out yeah. there i personally don't understand why being small is a bad thing i'm small is it, an, is it an existential, like, be oh, yeah, they just, need to feel, you need to feel important or something? <clears throat> you are so small and insignificant Cosmically in the grand so. cosmic so what? Like theater what? that is the universe. Cosmic yeah, but, theater! But I, what I'm saying Ooh. is that I've never been able to understand the problem with that. I think something, it might just be just being totally overwhelmed by the scope of it sometimes. Yeah. Like, you think it's an evolutionary thing? Maybe, because like when you think about- We're not about, meant to understand it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like when you really? think about the, because it's just like an infinite space where the things from the Big Bang are expanding outwards and who knows what exists outside that other Big Bangs that already yeah. happened or something or haven't happened. But like thinking like infinity is just like something that the brain can't like really think about because like you have to, put a border around it to yeah. like have, have it make sense. Like having just like in space that goes on forever, like automatically your brain's like, but where's like the wall at the end? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and you're like, yeah. well, it just keeps going. Yeah. Oh, it's also like when, uh, when outer world people get, go to earth for the first time. Yeah. They look up and they see infinite sky and it's just like, they've never seen oh, that yeah. before. And it Cause in, in the up. expanse, they're like, they've lived inside something forever that like yeah. keeps space from killing oh, them yeah so well like, i mean like this character we, that goes outside for the first time on earth and has like a panic attack because they're like oh god i'm gonna fall i have plenty space. of panic attacks on earth but like we only have <laughs> we only have the tools that we're given right yeah. and if we grow up in a certain setting we understand that certain setting it's like water bugs like they don't have concept of underwater mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like they don't 
as I understand it, they don't, they just, because they stay on top of the water, it's just the ground to them. Yeah. And like, there's no dimension below. And it's like, Mm. And then the fish that just, comes out to eat them is the most terrifying eldritch. Yeah, it's because you don't. It does the, cosmically. It makes no sense to you. <laughs> it just can't be possible. That's like when they're explaining. It's like, like something coming the out of fourth dimension. They use it as a comparison that if someone exists in a second dimension, that they could never perceive a third. Yeah. So that if you stepped into it and like appeared in their second dimension, it would yeah. freak them the fuck out because it yeah. would basically be like if you walked through it. It would basically be like those MRI scans of your body. Yeah. Like all they would see is just, you know, a sliver of yeah. your body. Gross. Even like the idea that all those images that we see from the web telescope and stuff, like that's all stuff that is long gone. Yeah, it yeah. happened yeah. hundreds of millions of Fuck. light years ago. Who's getting, getting the light from it finally? Yeah. This or is actually like it takes ago. eight minutes for light from our sun to hit us. Yeah. It's wild. We're eight minutes behind. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the, um, it's, it's less seen as like a, oh shit, like uh, I mean nothing and more of, a, it's almost like a positive thing where people are like, okay, I have this stuff that's significant to me here on the planet, like, you know, my problems, my car got stolen or whatever. And then <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden you see something like that and you're like, oh, wow. It's, uh, my, you know, my dumb shit that I'm working on here is kind of insignificant. Yeah, seriously, on so stop then, like, bitching yeah. about it. And <laughs> astronauts will like always say that too when they come back when they see the whole Earth in one yeah. vision. They're just like, and they just kind of like, wow, like like they, they have this epiphany almost. Except for yeah. Jeff Bezos. He didn't give a fuck. Yeah, he was just, he was like, just like, that cost. Shut up, William Shatner mouth. about space. Let's pop this champagne bottle open. <laughs> well, hopefully we haven't freaked anybody out too much. Fuck you, talk Jeff of, Bezos. <laughs> yeah, also that too. But oh my of- my! I have my homeless story. Oh, tell it quick! It's literally quick. twenty seconds. Okay. So, I need to preface this with saying that uh, you guys should do something, which is that do something nice for someone or charity or whatever, and tell no one ever. Not even the people you're closest to. Just do it for yourself and just be self. Just keep it to yourself and know that you did this thing. And but no how are people gonna, gonna praise me if I don't? Exactly. Tell I don't praise uh, you anyway, Jacob. Don't worry about it. But I'm telling you that I did this because of what happened afterwards is so stupid, which is that uh, I just gotten a pizza um, and I was driving home and this dude was walking like through the lane at a red light and I was like, I'll give him a slice of pizza, why not? So I rolled my window down and went, hey, you want some pizza? And he said, sure. So I went to grab one and a second one like was stuck to it. So I went, okay. And I did both hands and I picked up both of them and like, handed it out my window and was like, all right, enjoy. And then I brought my hands back in and the light turned green and I looked around and realized I didn't have any napkins. And my hands were just like like dripping with like orange Ugh. oil and they had like tomato sauce on them and stuff. And so I literally, <laughs> I was like eight minutes away from home and I drove home the rest of the way with the back of my hands. <laughs> That's talent um, right there. Yeah, so actually let me, let me prep or, uh, Re restate. Don't ever do anything for anyone because it will only have negative results. You'll make a fool of yourself. Yeah, you I might had a not similar situation to the second slice thing where I could have sworn I had smaller bills, and like uh, this poor woman, uh, but in many senses, came up to the the window of my car, and I was like, "Oh yeah, let me get." And I pull out my wallet and I open it, and I realize all I have is a twenty. <laughs> and I was like, and she's looking at me. I took out my wallet. I'm not gonna go. Actually, sorry. And I was just like, oh. here you go. I mean, like, I, I mean, like, yeah. I don't mind. It's twenty bucks in yeah. the grand scheme of things. It's not that much. But I really did think I had a five or a ten. <laughs> and I was like, here's my. F- all right. <laughs> you've seen it. I've seen. Yeah, it. you've seen it. I'm not gonna yeah. put it away. I'm not an asshole. And like, at you know, I don't miss. Yeah. I don't miss that money. But yeah. it was really funny that I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, let's rock with this. Yeah, I know. I know we have to wrap, but I did almost the exact same thing uh, the other day when I did my fluff and fold, uh, which is that I had a twenty, a one, and a five, and the total was seventeen, and so I only wanted to tip four. So I literally took the five, folded it up, and then hid it in another place in my wallet, so that when I opened my wallet, she wouldn't see me choosing the one over the five. <laughs> You're hey, overthinking everybody. this. That's, Listen, that's my life. That's, that's, sure that's literally. My, that's why when I like try to explain things to people, they think I'm a crazy person because I there's. No, you're entire, worse. I you're swear. George Costanza. 
<laughs> There's an iceberg of logic and reasoning and thought. Hey, everybody, make sure to stick your landings for your charitable donations. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll look like a fool. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Funhouse Podcast. Bye, everyone. We'll catch you next time. You are completely insignificant. Yeah, if you see Ryan's uh, Elantra 2012 out there, <laughs> Hyundai Elantra. Nothing matters, which is a good thing. And yeah, if you find an Elantra with pizza it. grease all over the wheel, don't worry, that one's fine. <laughs> you can cut us off whenever, Rick. <laughs> 